Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with our special guest, Nick Vale. Great to see you again. Happy to be here. Okay, Nick is incidentally also the producer of our Manhattan show, currently titled No Free Will. It's a live call-in show, you know, direct to Manhattan. All right, the title, this is episode number 185. We've been doing this for a long time, like about four years now here. And... Um, Basically, the title is called Free Will Belief Causes Needless Suffering. Needless Suffering. All right, like, I guess, should we define free will first and all that stuff? Explain to, like, the audience what people mean when they generally say they have a free will. What people mean by free will is that their life is up to them. They are in control of their own destiny. They are the conscious self-causer and first causer of their life, beliefs, actions, desires, everything. Excellent. All right. So I'll explain it also in terms of like what it is to not have a free will. In other words, like a puppet, you know, you got a puppet who that it's got a little hand in it, right? Doesn't have free will, right? Or if it's a marionette with strings, you don't say that the puppet or the marionette is doing things of their free will because like something is controlling them, right? So just in the same way as something is controlling the actions of the puppet, certain forces, certain compulsions i'm not going to say influences because that confuses people yes it does compulsions are causing us to do what we do and so like you know so like basically to have free will would be to have more free will more control or whatever than a puppet would and the truth is that the, the amazing fact of this reality is that we don't we have no more control than a puppet or a robot okay and again one more thing before we get into the the topic why is this so colossally monumentally important it's colossally monumentally important because i would you say 90 percent of the world is currently under the belief system that p human beings have free will and it's not good or even truthful and it doesn't make a sane planet when you've got 90 percent of its inhabitants walking around with the wrong idea of what reality is excellent excellent everybody's like the world is like completely deluded everybody thinks stuff is up to us and like our show you know is really about the harm this causes most, most oh people, yeah most people think you know it doesn't really matter whether we know we have a free will or not but we're going to explain in detail why it does matter why it's be much better for our world to overcome it and again one more thing before we do that let's just explain let's do one of these dominoes things because we've got to do it several of them. so like all right basically the idea which is one like, do you want me to do might as well do this one first the, i'm afraid it's going to knock all of them over no no be be very careful maybe okay. use your finger instead of the thing okay all right hold on hold on so basically to set this up um what what makes free will impossible do you want to explain it causality I'll let you do it. All right. What makes free will impossible is that everything has a cause. Okay? And like some people in quantum mechanics say, no, not everything has a cause, which is nonsense. But even if, if they were right, if things are not caused, then they couldn't be caused by our free will anyhow. But anyway, the truth is everything has a cause. And so that means we make a decision, right? There's a cause to it. Let's say, let's say we're, we represent I that domino. All we right, so each domino is a moment in time, correct? Yes, yeah. Moment in time, okay. So our parents had sex and gave us, but their parents, so this domino regresses infinitely in, in, in reverse infinity to before what? The planet was born and before the universe was created. So then we come somewhere in here. So, okay, go ahead. One moment in time. All right. All right, so like we, let's say we're this next to last domino, right? And then, like, that last domino is the decision that we're making or the act we're doing, whatever it is we're doing. Now, people who believe in free will are claiming that we're doing that free of anything that's making us do that. In other words, nothing at all is making us, where by these dominoes we're showing that, yes, the, the reason, for example, that this domino is going to topple this one is because this one toppled this, this one and this one toppled that one. So um, that's what cause and effect is, causality, the law of cause and effect that governs not just human beings but everything. So... Um, 
Do you want to add anything more to it before we topple the dominoes and just like show them very clearly how cause and effect works? Just one moment in time is the cause of the next moment in time and the next moment in time is so on and so forth. And it goes back and forward in moments in time. Right. So Nick, I'm worried ask, if I knock over the domino, all of us, so no, maybe no, you should hold well, the table down. No, no, no. It's do, shake. Well, do, it, do it with your finger. I, I think, know, but I'm, okay. No, hold, hold on, hold on. But wait, 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 wait. Just press all down. Right, but before we do this, Because I might also, be the cause of all the dominoes falling. What, what do you say to people? Some, sometimes people say, well, we don't know what the cause of what our reactions are. Well, I was going to say, what about when people say, I'm the first cause, I'm the self-cause, in this chain of dominoes, that's me over here. What do you say to those people? That they're the conscious first causer of their lives well that's a, that's absurd because like to assert that you're the first causer of anything means that there's nothing that happened in your life before that could have influenced or caused it that that doesn't make any sense there's right. only there's, there's an a, infinite regressive dominoes going back to the, to the big bang or whatever you know or to when your parents conceived you so right that's crazy it is and and then there's only one potentially conceptual first cause that would be the first cause of anything and that even doesn't make sense because you'd think well there must have been something before that but we're really only concerned with the moment we were conceived, which is our parents having, you know, right. sex. So. But again, like, let's say somebody That's says, the like, big bang. <laughs> right, let's, let's, somebody might say, well, we don't know what, let's say, we don't know what caused us to make our decision, so how do we know what's caused? How do we explain? Oh, well, that's obviously in the unconscious or the subconscious. Or how about the state of the universe? Like, describe these... No, no, if there's a cause and you don't know what it is, that doesn't mean the cause isn't there. It just means you're not aware of what the cause is. But believe me, when George and I tell you, the cause is there, you're just not conscious of what the cause is. It's in your unconscious. Right, and here's the other thing. Like, from, from one perspective, we're not aware because it's on the unconscious. Another perspective is we know the cause of everything. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right, you want to explain yeah, that? The cause of everything is the entire state of the universe. Exactly. But actually, the cause of everything is the human's uh, programming to go always towards pleasure and away from pain. That's the real cause to everything, that you have no choice based on your our operating system of always predicting of what will give us the most happiness, pleasure, overall satisfaction, going away from things that don't. Okay. That's always the cause. Okay. All right. Or um, the entire state of the universe. Right. All right. So basically, yeah, for, for those who want to kind of like know complete cause, so let's say we're this human being, consider this the state of the universe at the moment previous, and this uh, domino, the state of the universe before that. All right. So here we go. So, so like, each domino represents a moment in time, right? Right. So the, one moment in time causes the next moment in time, which causes it. So every moment of the universe is dependent on the moment before. Exactly. And human lives are in the universe. There you go. So if they're in the universe and not outside are, are you in the universe i'm in the universe so then every moment of your life is dependent on the moment before absolutely all right so can you hold the table down so, okay, okay i will hold the table Ready? down yes oh good not, i thought all the other ones are gonna fall all right so what does that explain to you all right this is causality this is how causality works this we could not have caused our decision the last domino were we not caused by what caused us and were was that not caused by what caused that and you know and these dominoes clearly you know this principle applies to everything that is why free will is absolutely completely irrevocably <laughs> impossible all right Nick, so why is this belief in free will? So just so you know, this cause in this example is a domino, which is a physical cause. Mm -hmm. But psychologically, it could be a mental cause, like a reason. Excellent. Or a spiritual cause, which would be a spiritual reason or cause. So okay. it doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't matter if it's caused by a physical entity like a domino or an immaterial spirit, spiritual cause. It's still caused. Absolutely. That's a great point. All right. What's, okay. Uh, okay. Now, why is this belief in free will so horribly evil? It's an evil, bad, bad belief. I'm so glad you brought that up. On other shows, we've focused on politicians, teachers, lawyers, uh, judges, and uh, business people. And who else have we focused on? Politicians and religious leaders. But I would like to talk to psychiatrists, if you don't mind. No, please. Why is it so evil? If someone's depressed and they're in therapy, and the therapist does not teach you causal will theory that Georgian has basically founded, I would say it's bordering on malpractice. You always say the famous line, don't expect someone to get something whose salary depends on them not getting it. A therapist or a psychoanalyst or a psychiatrist who shoves pills down you could basically heal you of your severe depression by teaching you, now why would you, t if your will is not free, how do you see that immediate, giving you immediate relief to 
self-hatred and so wanting to punish suicide and severe depression is really you hating yourself and punishing yourself please talk to psychiatrists over this airwaves about why that's evil exactly because here's the thing like i mean and like psychiatrists psychologists therapists should know this social because, workers because why those. should they know this because like they're trying they, to help people no no but they must have to be a therapist a psychiatrist a psychologist you would have to have taken basic elementary psychology okay and, and, and in that Psych 101, you would learn that, that human behavior, not just human behavior, the behavior of all organisms, is predicated by nature and nurture. In other words, like nature and nurture it, is what determines human behavior. Now, it doesn't, we never learned in school that it's, well, it's part of its nature, part of its nurture, and part of it is this, like, this funny little belief called free will that nobody ever understands. We never learned that. These, these therapists n learn this. It's always our genes and our environment that are determining our behavior. So, for them to not communicate this understanding to their patients is for them to basically oh so you're saying it's more evil for them because they've actually studied this yeah, where a politician they should know it or a lawyer or where a judge should have also but you're saying especially people in the mental health field who are in the field of sanity should be more are more evil for not explaining because they've studied it you're saying yes and and you That's know while we're, while we're calling them evil we just have to like you know Explain Faded the evil. It's not right, their it's the caveat. Right, we're not blaming them because right. they don't have a free will. In other words, like the universe is not allowing them to either express the morality or the logic to to do what they should be doing. So you know, you got to make that very clear. All right. So like, so yeah. So what happens is like, so like, you know, somebody's depressed. Somebody's like, why do people that get depressed? A lot of times, people get depressed because they fail at things. You know, like they fail at a job or at school or at a relationship or something. They, you know, they they believe that they are lacking in certain qualities, whatever, and they feel bad about that. Right. All right. That's that's part of the problem. But free will belief makes that much much worse because like in other words like if something happens in our life that causes us to fail at something right and it's like let's say we're in school and like you know let's say the school closes right so like we can't graduate that's not our fault nobody's gonna like say well you you failed it at, at school for that all right so like but with the free will belief, it's not like that. With free will belief, it's like if we fail at anything, we're going to blame ourselves. And that just compounds, adds to the, to the you know, to the just baseline um, disappointment that would be feeling, you know, otherwise. In other words, basically we're saying without the free will belief, people wouldn't get nearly as depressed as people tend to get. I, I think that psychiatrists don't get it because, uh, you know, like you said, they, they, if they heal people too quickly, they lose their income stream. So it would be like if I were a psychiatrist and a patient came to me and said, Dr. Vale, I'm so uh, suicidally depressed. I left my wife. I screwed up my business. And I said, you know, there's no free will, don't you? You know, you haven't you seen George and Nick's show and, there's no, and read their books. There's no free will. You really shouldn't beat yourself up. The guy's going to be in a much better mood all of a sudden. I don't know if he'll need the services of the psychiatrist. It, it'll be that quick of an awakening. Makes a lot of sense. And that's evil, but it's faded because he can't help. The psychiatrist can't help but to do what's in his self-best interest. So it's almost like uh, everything's conspiring in the mental health field to not des uh, set, send out this knowledge that man's will is not free because it would be too easy a fix. I agree. All right. So now well, I think. But we... it is evil because the, these people are hired it's evil. to make the world a better place by helping people alleviate their symptoms. And yet they don't either know or don't want them to know that man's will is not free. Yeah, it's self-interest because like, because right. like, and also because like, you know, if you become a psychiatrist or uh, get a PhD in psychology, you have a certain kind of pride. that You, you tend to believe that you're like superior to, to those people who don't have those degrees, right? And so like basically to the extent you understand that you don't have a free will, you can't take credit for that anymore so like you know a lot of these psychiatrists and psychologists like to maintain their air of superiority you know by maintaining their belief in free will it's unfortunate but if we had a therapist on the show that he or she would say well if i tell them there's no free will they'll uh say well it's all in god's hands and i'm not responsible and i don't need to do anything 
And, the, you know, the therapists love to say, no, no, you're responsible for your own life. So they think they'll make the patient too passive if they tell them. To, explain why not having a free will doesn't make you passive yeah, but, and why you don't skirt around and say, I don't, I'm not responsible. Exactly. A better approach is if these therapists say to patients, listen, um, no, you are, you're not fundamentally responsible for anything you do in your life, for whether you get something right or you don't. But. What you have to understand is that what you do or you don't do has consequences. So in other words, like, we will try to do the right thing because, you know, life teaches us that a lot of times when we don't do the right thing, we don't get what we want. You know, so it's as simple as that. It's just like from self-interest, if we want certain things in life, it makes sense to behave in certain ways. So you're saying the universe rewards people who get things right and punishes people who get things wrong? It seems like, for example... Except for the free will thing. We got that all wrong. And we, well, we're getting we, punished for that. Think about that, yeah. No, no, the belief in free will has existed for thousands of years. Uh, you know, if, if, if it were wrong, we sh people should have been punished. Well, that's what I'm saying. We are punished. Yeah, that's like, true. We're, we're punished, you know, by it on a daily basis. And we're going to get more into this, but... We don't realize that, that we're being punished. In other words, like, because people believe in free will, people believe that a lot of the suffering that we undergo is just coming from some other source. It's just, you know, they don't connect it to the belief in free will. Yeah, you're right. Good point. All right, so, like, now let's, so we've just addressed how, like, you know, the mental health system really should, you know, re, you know, uh, just basically get up to speed on this, right? You know, teach this, you know, promote us. But this isn't just about them. It's about our personal relationships. Let's say you're married, right? And your wife kind of like, and you have some kind of disagreement. Let's say, let's say you're, you're like staying at work every day or night and just coming home at nine o'clock every night. And she's really upset about you, right? She doesn't. And it's like, so you get into this this, this like and you know you may believe you're right because like because like you have expenses you have to pay the bills and stuff right you know there's she's spending a lot of money right she's going to the mall every day and and like <laughs> and so like and so you get into this argument now all right so nick explain how the free will yeah, but i just want to finish the therapist thing because I, okay. I have a special hatred for them okay so i've been undercover in a lot of therapy and everything I, i'll go on to your point it is a pro con thing we have to tell the world there's more pros to not get it, to understanding there's no free will because if a therapist said well listen uh i agree with there's no free will and the pro is it's a wonderful coping skill right and they, they're always teaching coping skills that's like therapy 101 if you say well i'm not to deeply blame and i'm not to blame in any true or deep fundamental sense i've given it to the universe or god that's a wonderful 100 percent great coping skill but the con is they think that you're going to be passive and not take responsibility for your life. So the pros far outweigh the cons that you're validated, vindicated, and exonerated for all the silly and stupid mistakes you made. You can no longer logically hate yourself or others. So we want the world to, to know that there's many more pros and, and not, you know, and, and saying there's no free will. Now, what were you saying about the next Excellent. topic? Yeah, all right. Like, so like a relationship. So it's a great coping skill. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great philosophy of life also because it makes sense. And all it's right. the only rational explanation for human behavior, as it turns out. Yeah. There you go. All right, so you got this couple, this married right. couple. He's coming home from, from work late every night. She's, like, spending all this money at the mall every day. They're at each other, you know. They both think they're right. They both think the other person is wrong. Explain to the audience how this belief in free will makes... Cer certainly they have a problem. Explain to the audience how this free will belief makes it not only works, but sometimes makes it pretty much sometimes impossible for them to resolve their problem. Okay, so in the no free will paradigm, you're both on the same side of the, of the equation of what's wrong with our relationship. Why is the universe doing this to us? You know, not why are you doing that? You know, why is the universe? So you're both on the same side and you could say, let's try to talk this out and figure out why the universe is making you do that and why the universe is compelling me to not like you doing that. As opposed to, you have malicious intent and you of your own free will could have done otherwise, and you're going out of your way to screw me and hurt me, therefore I effing hate you, and I'm gonna get re revenge, poisonous blame, and retribution on you, and make you pay, suffer and get back at you. It's a huge difference. That's great. Do you get that? Do you get that? I mean, it's very important. If, you know, the, the, this couple definitely has a problem, right? But if they both believe in free will, you know, she's saying, like, you of your free will, you know, are coming home late. 
It's not like she's not understanding, oh my God, things that are not in his control, like his unconscious and like causality, are causing him to be late every night. You know, she's blaming him. And, she's, and he's saying, well, you of your free will are going out and spending all this money every day, making it necessary for me to like, you know, have to like work late and all. And he doesn't understand that she's out there spending all this money because maybe, who, who knows, she's like looking at all these commercials. Something that is not in her control because she doesn't have a free will is making her do that. So like, yeah, like you say, to the extent they get that, you know, they're on the same side. They're trying. And once you're on the same side, you can gently admonish and reprimand someone for behavior you don't like, which will just be the new causality, which would be when I say cause the new seed of the new behavior you're trying to accomplish. But you can reprimand and admonish someone nicely and say, you know, I don't really like it when you do that, but I know it's not up to you, but I just want to be the new causality for you by me complaining so you don't do that again. So in other words, you're the, the next domino. You know, they're going to react to you trying to ca- create a new causality so that you can still do that. There's, that's what we're doing with this Absolutely. show. We're trying to be the new causality to get the free will thing straightened out. Right. So you don't just sit back and just say, Oh, well, well, you're coming home late every night and I don't like it. You could say, listen, uh, can you can you really you know, I want to be the new cause for you to come home a little early because it really upsets me. And the universe has compelled me to want to talk it out with you and get to the bottom of this. But it's not you're not doing something, you know, of your own free will, which implies a malicious, hurtful intent. Excellent. So basically, again, what we're saying is, you know, some people believe that, like, if we don't have a free will, nothing's up to us, then we can't really get anything done. Or why change anything? Right. You've just explained, no, we don't have a free will, but we can still affect our lives in a lot of ways. It's just not up to us whether we do or not, which is fine. Okay. But it's also not as toxic and severe and intense. Your your description of the couple is sounds like an escalating war of fights and yelling and screaming. Right. What I'm saying is a muted version of the same conversation, which is gentler and nice. You still have to say something if somebody's upsetting and, you. Right. And the but you don't part- yell. You don't get physical. You don't call police. You don't say I'm t- go out cheating on you. You don't go for revenge. See, revenge and retribution is a very indirect, malicious way. Why assertiveness is more. I know you don't have a free will. Please don't do that again. I'm not blaming you, but I would prefer that, you know. So there's a b- very big difference between revenge and assertiveness. Okay, excellent. So like, yeah, all right. Revenge now, versus assertiveness. We've got all these dominoes here. Oh, okay, like, sorry. Now, yes. wait a minute. It's all right. Okay. So um, basically, some people say like, well, you know, like, um, not everything is predictable. You know, it's like, you know, we can't predict the future. So that means we have free will. It's an insane kind of free will belief. But people say that, you know, life, you know, basically they're, they're trying to refute causality. You know, they're saying if things aren't predictable, then they can't be caused. Now, we're going to explain through this this series, where's the camera? Through this series of of dominoes. Okay, those over there. Like Now, see this domino. I have no idea if this domino is going to stay on the table or if it's going to topple over the table over the edge. I don't know. You don't know. It's unpredictable. We don't know. But we're going to demonstrate through this cause and effect manner how this, you know, this domino still either like you know topples over the table or not and is completely caused by the other dominoes so you're saying just because it's unpredictable obviously doesn't give the dominoes free will there you go right so i always give the example of a hurricane obviously a hurricane doesn't have free will but it's not predictable so i don't know who you're saying a lot of people think that i don't really know who would you know say that in public all right dude do the honors i don't want any of the other dominoes to fall down Ooh, uh, see, look, look at that. So like if half of it's off the table. It's like, you know, it could have fallen. Maybe it did. You know, that's the thing. So like, again, unpredictability does not negate causality, just like we showed there. OK, more more of this evil free will belief. <laughs> evil. OK, um, and belief, the belief in free will is evil because the belief in free will. Let's say let's say. Um, all right, a good example. Well, we got judges, religious leaders, po- politics. We did the mental health. What do you? Uh, I just want to explain how, like, free will belief, wrongly, mistakenly, unjustly, unfairly, immorally blames people for what was not in their fault. An example. Let's that's say, a, like, that's a religious Nick thing. Nick and I, Nick and I were in the mall before coming here, right? I didn't order a coffee. Where? Let's say I ordered a coffee, right? And let's say, you know, somebody put something in the coffee that spiked it, you know? And so like, let's say after this taping, I go out and just like wreak habit. I, I commit a lot of crimes, right? A lot of, you know, bad things, okay? Now, let's say like, 
let's say so I'm caught, right? Now, let's say you're judging me. Let's say you're Nick. Nick, Nick saw that somebody put something in, in my coffee, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, he's going to say, he's going to, you know, after I do that, he's going to explain to the judge and police, listen, it's not his fault because like somebody spiked his drink with this crazy making thing that made him go out and do this stuff. So what I'm saying is like, that's, that's what ha no ha having no free will means. Now, like having, believing that people have free will is like the same as like knowing that like, for example, that my drink was spiked and still telling the judge, listen, yes, I saw that his drink was spiked fine, but, but he has a free will. So he's, you know, but he, sh he should go to prison, even though it wasn't his fault. Can you see the unfairness, the evil in that? You know, and we do this to, a, to each other all the time. Yeah, but you would still have to be removed from society and restrained and constrained and locked up. If, you're, if someone spikes your drink and you act nutty and crazy, and start killing people, you still have to be locked up. I wouldn't have to be. You wouldn't lock me up for that. Were you crazy? No, no. I mean, if you continue to act that way, <laughs> no, but I'm you'd saying, be a danger to society. Yeah, but no, no. In this instance, in this instance, you know, basically we're looking for the guy who spiked my drink. <laughs> yeah, but if you, if you, the spike drink would wear off, you're saying. If it didn't wear off, if, well, you no, no. if you continue to be a danger to society, I don't care if you're res responsible or not, <laughs> actions have consequences. All right, that's a good point. That's a good point. In other words, yes, that's an excellent point. That's great. So in other words, like, if... Yeah, the guy who spiked your drink would also be, but then he could say his drink was spiked and so on and so forth. <laughs> All right, yes. Yeah, so if whatever was in my drink caused me to continually start wreaking havoc on everything, then yes, you'd have to separate me from people. But if, if it's the case that like, you know, a few it, hours. Yes. Let's because like, crimes of passion, things, things like this happen. So a few hours, then, you know, like you wouldn't want me to be locked up for something that wasn't my fault. You know, that somebody spiked my drink. You know, you, I had no. Comp so it's evil. It's evil to blame people and have, want people to be punished for things that are not in any way under their control. I would want a dangerous person locked up because of my more uh, hedonic imperative and my pleasure principle, which I have no control over, that I would not want to feel in danger if, if you're out there. I do not want anybody else doing that. So right. I need to deter, deter, deter. We but got, I don't want to punish. I hear you. We got, we got about 50 okay. seconds left. One last Should point. Should I do this a couple so, more times? Uh, yeah. All right. Look. All right. And yeah, sometimes, go ahead. That one. And now with this one, like, sometimes, like, is this domino going to fall or not, right? We if don't I knock know. this over? Yes, we have no idea. I'm but predicting like, it won't. It's too far if, away. If, if, it, if it has a cause, it'll knock over. If not, it won't. Nope. See, it didn't have a cause. We've done this before twice on the Manhattan show, and we didn't separate the dominoes enough, <laughs> and it did topple, so it worked this time. So in other words, what we're saying is like, for that domino to have toppled, it had to have had a cause, and that causality applies to everything. That's why free will is impossible. Nick, thanks. This has been excellent. But it had show. a cause why it didn't knock over. It was too far away. There was a cause why it didn't get knocked over. So there's, also, there's always a cause. Absolutely. This is George Ortega and Nick Vale saying, listen, we're going to explain this till you get it. We'll Thanks be live next week in Manhattan. Every other week we're live in Manhattan.